Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and in today's video we're going to be going through the beta changes with iOS 8. Let's get started. Alright, so a little while ago I did a full recap showing you what was new with iOS 8 beta. This is the beta version of iOS 8. It should be released in the fall for everyone. If you haven't seen that video, the link is in the description. Now today's video I'm going to be going through all the changes that have come up from beta 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we'll get started with number 2. So beta 2 showed us a new feature or some new settings involved with the assistive touch here. So if we turn on assistive touch, it brings up this little dot here. If we tap on that, we we have two new settings here. So we have notification center up top and we have control center to the bottom right. So these are things that will help you if you tend to use assistive touch, especially if you have the home button issue and you're actually using it for your home button. So that's just one new feature with assistive touch. Next is a new application and these are a pain because they're stock applications which means we cannot delete them. This application is the podcast app and actually I'm going to go ahead right now and put this in my do not use application here because really I don't need this app and I don't think a lot of people are really going to use this so it's unfortunate we can't delete it but we can stick it in a folder called not used. You may use it, you may not, but that is a dedicated podcasts app. Moving back to the settings application and the notifications tab here, we now have the ability to customize which apps we want notifications for and which ones we don't. So just opening up an application, tapping on allow or disallow by this little swipe over here will give you that customization and allow you to choose which apps you get notifications from. Moving on now to beta 3, we got a new feature built in to the health application here. If we go into fitness, we now can actually track our distance that we've traveled and the amount of steps we've taken. Now it's able to do this with the iPhone's coprocessor, the M7 chip there, and you can see the distance you've traveled on each day that it's been running. And if we go into the fitness section and then tap on steps, you can also see how many steps you've taken per day. So today I've only done 22 steps. If you tap on week, it'll go through the week, the month, It'll go through the month of steps and you can see a little graph and it's exactly the same way with the distance. You can have all your recorded data showing as well. So how many steps you've taken all through different days from wherever you started all the way to where you are now. Now I'm not sure how accurate this is. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a lot of steps per day. I mean a few days I do have into the hundreds but I feel like I've done more steps than that. But we'll find out as it does roll out and as they improve this if it's very accurate and if it's something good to use. Once again, moving it back to our settings application here, if we scroll down to wallpapers, you can now add and see new wallpapers. So if we tap on choose wallpaper and tap on stills, you'll see that there are some new wallpapers added in to the wallpaper section here. Another feature I feel is going to be quite useful is involving our photos application. So if we tap on that, you'll see there's a section that's now been added called recently deleted. So if you do delete photos and basically you forget and you accidentally delete the wrong one, you'll have 30 days after being marked for deleting that you'll be able to bring back the photo. So let's say I wanted this photo back. I tap on it, I can delete it permanently or I can recover the photo here, tap recover photo and it'll go back into my photo stream. Another feature which unfortunately I don't have available to me involves using Wi-Fi calling. So if we go down to our phone settings here, there should be a setting somewhere here that will allow you to enable or disable Wi-Fi calling. Now as far as I know this works with T-Mobile and I don't know what carriers are going to allow this, if there's going to be a fee for it, things like that. But it's awesome that this feature is looking to be added in and hopefully it will be available to more carriers when the full version of iOS 8 is available. Moving on to beta 4 now, we'll start off with a new application called Tips. Now this app is actually going to give you tips that will help you use the iPhone and learn how to use all the different features and sort of get the most out of it. Now I find that this is going to be a good feature for a lot of people. It's sort of going to hurt me because I like to create videos showing you guys different tips. But at least here you'll have them, they'll be updated, you'll be able to learn different things you may have not known that you could do with the iPhone and sort of give you a little bit better idea of how to get the most out of it. Moving over to the Messages app now, 
we'll be able to use a new feature called Live Dictation. You may already seen this in Android devices, but if you tap on the little microphone down here, it's going to say or type out everything you say live rather than having to say everything and then have it just show up at the end. Now this will also work within Siri and various other applications that use a little dictation button down there. So just keep that in mind. It's a little feature, but I find it a little bit more useful than the way it was. Another change that was added in in beta 4, when you pull up the control center here, you'll now notice it looks different. The lines or grids that surrounded everything have been taken away. It sort of looks a little bit cleaner, kind of has that blurry background feel to it. Uh, it looks a little bit nicer. It's not a big change, but it is one that you will notice. Now moving to beta 5, what we're going to do is actually go back to our messaging app here. We've got the message already out. Now this one's going to involve that predictive message feature. So that's these right up here. You can say it says was, wasn't, wastes. It's trying to give you an idea of what you might want to say next and you can choose it. If you find this a little bit annoying, you can now disable it from down here. If you just tap and hold on the emoji app, you'll see we have a predictive toggle. So you can turn that off if you don't like it. If you want to keep it on, you can turn it back on just as easily. Another feature added in with the Beta 5 was a much quicker spotlight search. So if you pull down, you can see it's almost immediate. Now a comparison would be if I pull down Notification Center, you can see it's kind of slow, kind of gives you that little bounce at the end. Well, spotlight's instant. So you pull down from the middle, it's an instant spotlight search. Next up, we have another feature that involves the health application. So we'll just quickly go back to the health app. And you can see there's a section here called body measurements. Well, added in with the beta 5 is the new body fat percentage tracker here. So you can track the body fat percentage. You would probably have to put that in on your own. I'm not sure how it would actually get that from you. Maybe with some type of band or some type of app that may work with it. You can also get your body mass index. This is pretty standard stuff here. I don't really trust the body mass index because if you have a lot of muscle, it's sort of off. I trust body fat a lot more than that, but you can see we've got other features here, but with this, we've got two new features added in. So those were some of the new and main features added in to iOS 8 beta. This was beta 2, 3, 4, and 5. Beta 6 should be released August 15th-ish. That's actually my birthday, so we'll be excited to see what they release that day. Stay tuned for that video. Be sure to subscribe so you're notified in your YouTube inbox when I post that video and post other videos. Also, feel free to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and liked it. Also, if you have any questions or have a comment or anything to leave, be sure to leave it in the comment box down below. I check all the comments and respond to every comment that comes my way. Thanks for watching. As always, I will see you in the next one.